Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Justin with Is It Scary Wisconsin, joined here tonight by one of my best friends, Gage. Tonight, our next subject, maybe our next victim for Haunted House Reviews, the Haunted Sawmill in Merrill, Wisconsin. Before we get into things tonight, I just want to remind you all that there's a lot of imitators popping up. There's a lot of copycats popping up. And just remember, when it comes to your haunted house reviews, if it ain't as it scary, it ain't shit. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the haunted sawmill in Merrill, Wisconsin. Going in, I didn't know what to expect. Because I had read really positive reviews on Google, and I had read really bad reviews on Google. I'm sure they both have their warrants. Now, as you guys will see, tonight's review oh. is loaded to the teeth. Much like the haunted sawmill was loaded to the teeth with customers at open. This is the first haunted attraction I have ever gone to outside of Dominion of Terror in Sheboygan. This is the first haunted attraction I've ever gone to where five minutes after doors open, there was a line of people wrapped around the building. I underestimated the power of this community event. I underestimated how popular this haunted attraction would be. Now, I want to remind everyone from the Haunted Sawmill that's going to see this, and I know there's going to be a lot of you. We are known for our no BS haunted attraction reviews. We are known for hurting a lot of grown men and grown women's feelings because we criticize their mediocre haunt projects. We are more than likely on the cusp of being banned at some haunts as well. Absolutely. No question. However, that being said, we hope that in this review, we can offer some sort of constructive criticism and some sort of positive influence that you can take back to your haunted attraction to make it better. Now, let me set the stage for you. A gathering in the community, a positive influence on members of the community, an exciting, welcoming, accepting vibe, great scenery, the smell of nachos and popcorn. What's there not to love? Actors walking and working the queue line. Sounds like we're going to have a great night to me. Spoiler alert, it was a pretty great time. So let's hop in and let's check out the Haunted Sawmill in Merrill, Wisconsin. Now, first thing we're going to do, for those of you who are new here, I give general scores. So 40 points of the review comes from general questions for me. 40 points of the review comes from scare questions for Gage. And then 10 points Gage, 10 points me we give personal points to things we liked that we saw in the attraction. We add everything up and that gives you your score out of 100. So here we go. Let's get into it. General. Is there a website? Yes. Does the website have good information? Yes and no. One out of two points. I actually saw when you go to the Haunted Sawmills website, before I criticize for this, I want to just make absolutely certain that I have this correct. Because I would be really, really disappointed if I got this wrong. I mean, I would be mad about it. And I don't. I am, in fact, correct. There is still a Haunted Sawmill 2023 tab that takes you to then the dates from this year's season and the special events. So some of the information on the website is a little bit out of date. A little bit of touch-up will make that a lot better. I'm actually surprised that it is still there 
because this is such a popular event. So one out of two points for that first question. Is parking available on site? I said yes. Everybody's parking on the road. I don't know if they actually have a parking lot. Um, I guess I don't care. Is it clearly labeled? I also said yes because it's almost like it's assumed everybody's parking on the freaking road. It's no parking signs, no parking signs, and then clear streets. Go ahead, park, whatever. Do what you want. So it's almost like the people here get it. They know what's going on. So I'm going to give the points for that one. I'm not going to take points off for not having a parking lot and marked parking. Uh, park, parking on the street is good enough. Is there a clearly labeled and attended ticket booth? Yes. Does it present prices and rules? Yes. How, how did we ever miss that they had a speed pass? <laughs> you know, Gage, I think that's a testament to how excited we were. For real. We, we were. We were I excited. Mean, you I can mean that, visually see the haunt as we're waiting. So. Because I already had it in my head that they didn't have a speed pass for this show. So I'm like, I don't even need to look for speed pass. I'll just buy three regular admission and we'll go get in line. You want to know when we found out when there was a speed pass? When we got to the when? door and saw yeah. like saw like twelve people in this other line, we're like, "What are they doing? Like, are they special admission?" He's like, "No, they're speed pass." I'm like, "Y'all got an a speed hour and a half, hour, hour and hour and forty five. I'm like, 40, I'm, yeah, like yeah, I'm like, y'all got a speed pass? I would have bought that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but way to save us time going to others. <laughs> but but now there is something that I want to touch on with that later. Is there a clearly labeled ticket booth? Does it present price or rules? Yes. Two points. Clear queue lines? Yes. Two points. Are the attractions clearly marked? Yes. Two points. Are atmospheric music and audio selections appropriate? Yes. Two points. We'll talk more about that later. Did actors stay in character? Yes. Five points. Was the haunt fully well staffed? Yes. Five points. There were plenty of actors and actresses on site. Was there clear directions through and after the haunt was over? Yes. Two points. Was the lighting used in the haunt appropriate? Yes, two points. Were there any unusual scents? Yes, but it was weaker. One point out of two. Did you catch another group? Yes. While this is normally a automatic zero points, I'm giving one. And the reason is... Even with actors stalling us for two to three minutes and actually ad-libbing a performance to stop us from going further as fast as we were going, we still caught this other group. This is one of the few times I'm not going to completely blame it on pacing and haunt design. The group in front of us was really, really slow. And that is not the Haunted Sawmill's fault. I will not blame the Haunted Sawmill for that, but I do have to take at least one point off because we did catch a group and it did kill the show. They did really try to stall They us. really they tried. Did. We'll <laughs> talk about that later. Was the scenery appropriate? Hell yes, two points. Did the haunt maintain immersion? For the most part, one of two points. We caught a group. Had a couple other things happen at the back half of the haunt. We'll talk about it. Was the walking path safe and well-maintained? Yes, two points. Did the haunt feel appropriately priced? Ah, uh, yes, two points. And the, did the haunt have a good atmosphere? Yeah, two points. Gage, uh, I had a grand total of 36 out of 40. Take it away. Gage has got scare score, by the way, guys. For the scares? <clears throat> did Andrew's attempt to scare you? I gave them a... One out of two points. More on that later. Were masks used of good quality? Yes. Did props seem real and scary? Yes. Both of which were two, totaling four. Were there actors in correct positions to answer scares? Yes, two points. Was there a variety of monsters or haunters unless specifically stated in a theme? Yes, two points. Did the actors try to scare you twice in a scene or even three times in a scene? Yes, and yes, both two points with the four. Total of four. Did any actors scare below or above the waist? Both yes and yes. Two and two. Was there more than jump scares in the haunt? Yes. 
it was a lot of unique situations. This is usually a five pointer, and they got all five. Was there a go home scare or a, a pretty much a scare in the very last room? Yes, there was. Were the scares the same as last year, or was it all just the same old, uh, same old scary? Here's the thing. This is a new experience for us, so I just gave it an all-around experience. I gave them a four out of five. I'm going to touch on that after I get done with this. That's fair. Did actors seem well-trained and enthusiastic? Yes. Were all props to animatronics and devices in working order? Yes. No, that's the ones that we can see, by the way. Yeah. Was there any unique scares? Yes. Did anyone scream, get out? Thankfully not. There's some big no-no words out there in the haunt community, and that's get out, fresh meat, and boo, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you could, if, if you, a kindergarten could think about it, you probably shouldn't say it. And did any sounds used to enhance the scares? Here's the thing about that place. It is huge, all right? You don't hear much. And when there was sounds to enhance the scares, they enhanced them. Yes, for an additional two points. And total, I, like, I, wanna... I like how you build it up to that. You're like, and when there was sounds, <laughs> yes, they did enhance the enhance the scares. I was like, okay, bro. Okay, drama I queen. Could just, let me just pull the microphone close so I can whisper it to you in your ear. <laughs> how many points out of 40? So that is 38 <clears throat> out of 40. I want to touch on the two negatives here. When I did mention, did actors attempt to scare you? There was a couple of actors. No, towards the back at back half of the haunt, kind of sat there, looking at me. Yeah, very limp like interactions. This. It was very little. The amount was seldom compared to the outstanding performance of the others. Dare I say, phenomenal. And <laughs> I had to note that, so which is why I took off that point. My next point that I took off was due to the overall experience of four out of five. I want to note that I was in the middle of this group. At twice, halfway through the haunt, we did kind of switch, uh, flip who was in front and who was behind and such. Both of which I was in the middle through the entire experience. I really didn't get much scares. No one was really jumping out at me. They're always targeting the first person. If I have to give some advice to the actors at the haunted sawmill... Please consider the people in the middle. No, I'm not saying there wasn't, which is why I gave them the four out of five. Just you know, let's let's keep it a little even, guys. You want that's my two cents. You want to wa you. You watch how you attack the line. Um, we we kind of talked about this. We talked about this with um, burial chamber, burial chamber, burial chamber this chamber. year too. And yeah. I was in front, and yeah. no one attacked me. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah. So, grand total is going to be 74 out of 80. That's uh, a good start. A it's very a good start. really good start. So as long We haven't even got the bonus points yeah, yet. Yeah, as long as they get at least two bonus points, they're, they're a good haunt. So, um, you know, here's the thing. I have some thoughts. You go right ahead, buddy. I'll turn off my microphone. <laughs> I know this haunt is volunteering community, but we do have some advice. The speed pass was not overtly or obviously advertised online. That might be on purpose, that might be on accident. I understand that the option to add speed pass is there. I never got that far because I never saw anything about it before that. Now, I might have just missed it. That could be my own fault. As reviewers, I guarantee you we would have bought the speed pass because we didn't get to Perdition Pines until 9 o'clock. <laughs> it was a long day. I admit openly that I never clicked the event to check and see if they had a speed pass, but I just want to mention that right off the bat. I feel like that is something that should be right in your face. For advertising purposes. The pallet maze at the start of the haunt before you even get in line for the main attraction is a really good idea. It also sets a pace in an atmosphere. 
but several actors just walked by us and ignored us. We did have a nice interaction with one, but the rest of them just kind of, whatever. The maze itself was cool, but could have used an additional one to two actors. I love the fact that this whole gathering area vibe felt like old school Green Bay Fear, or even New Age Terror on the Fox on steroids. They had one guy at the front of the house bringing everybody into the attraction. He wasn't in a mask or makeup. This could have been better. I've seen plenty of security guards at the haunted sawmill already. I don't need to see another one. The haunt intro was solid. I liked the lady in the first room. She gave clear and concise, no BS directions, and she didn't mess around. There was quite a variety of quality scenes in the house, as well as some pop-up animatronics to match, and they actually got scares out of us. This was good, and exactly, exactly what I was looking for out of this haunt. Other than the office of Dr. Morris, I didn't see or hear many actors referencing the house's story. This was a soft mess for me and something that could use some work. You spend so much time with the story on your website, I expected it to be more prevalent in your house. The back half of the house had a lot of actors that just stared at us. This was a big miss, as a lot of things leading up to that were solid and set an excellent atmosphere. However, the end of the house was weaker. Other than the car, I don't know if there actually was a really good go-home scare. At the end of the day, the Haunted Sawmill in Merrill, Wisconsin is an awesome community event. With a few minor tweaks, they can take this show from good to great. I had fun, and what a great way. What a phenomenal way to end our 2024 season than with a brand new haunt with a ton, a metric ton of spirit. More on that when we get into the bonus points. Gage, anything you'd like to say about the haunted sawmill just in general? So just in general, there is a few points I want to make before we get into additional, I mean, some bonus points here, some, you know, kudos. You guys could skip two or three minutes ahead. It's not going to be anything relevant. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is why everyone <laughs> likes me more, Justin. That's true. That's why nobody likes me. <laughs> some points I want to make is I would like a way to enjoy the band post haunt experience. Yes. Uh, it's really cool. I, I do like the way they all perform on there. They do their lip syncing and such. Uh, it's a it's a fun, enjoyable experience. It's just a shame that the only way for me to experience it is if I'm waiting in line. Albeit, it's a great way to wait in line. But when I get done with the haunt, what if I want to go hang out and just watch watch the performance, eat some nachos, some burgers, whatever they're serving at the concession stand? You know, it would be a nice way to kind of enjoy that. Something I can maybe offer as advice. Now, I'm no construction worker, and I know you guys don't have much real estate when it comes to land, so you kind of need that area for, you know, the lines and such. Uh, is is there any way to build? I apologize. My dog is freaking out. It kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> uh, Ruby. Is there any way for you to build um, like some kind of overlook or something? Because I noticed as you're coming, as you're done with the haunt and you're like looking in this graded area, you're almost like a prisoner of a sort looking out at the oncoming victims. And is there a way for us to see 
the haunt or maybe or it's a haunt, sorry, the band, or maybe in the concessions area, a way to kind of step up on some things and to see the performance, get a good like bird's eye view of the location. It'd be cool. I understand what I'm probably saying is something incredibly expensive. It'd be something cool to see in the next five years or such. Uh, moving on. Another point I want to make is I can genuinely see why the town of Merrill is very proud of this haunt. Again, as you stated, we came up there and we're thinking, we'll show up five minutes after open. We'll show up around opening. There's going to be no one there. We, we'll be fine. It'll be easy. I thought we'd be out of there by quarter to seven. We Let me get just out of there till nine o'clock. As I was driving up now, again, we didn't know about the fast pass, but whatever. Um, <laughs> as we were driving up, we see all these cars parked in a road. We're like, there's no way. No there's way. no way this is for the haunted sawmill, is it? Come on. So we park on there, park on the road, and we walk up. And then, again, yeah, we see that line wrapped around. I just want to say, I can see why you guys are very proud of this haunt and why it's such a big community get-together. Yes. yes. I am very happy for you guys, the town of Merrill. I'm glad that this, along with I'm sure many other things, I'm not much, I'm not a, I'm not a tour guide, helps put the city on the map. That's my two cents on things. I'm ready to move on to bonus points whenever you are. So, for the bonus points section, we're each allowed to give up to ten bonus points for different things in the haunts that we enjoy. So, I'll start first. The faux band performance was very good. It got your extremely large crowd hyped. This place, guys, this haunt was absolutely packed to the teeth. So, and we're sitting there, and all of a sudden this group of, you know, in-theme actors comes out, and they pick it up guitars and stuff. I'm like... They're not really going to play music, are they? I said, if they start playing actual music, I'm going to lose it. Because I didn't expect that. And then I was like, huh. And then, they started, then a song started and they started kind of going along with it. And I was like, oh, I see what they're doing here. They got Tara on the Fox vibes going on. And I was like, huh, I like this. Now, at 37 years old, it doesn't necessarily blow me away. You know, it doesn't necessarily change my life. But 17-year-old me or 18-year-old me would have thought those guys and gals were the coolest people ever. Seriously. Would have had me hyped beyond all imagining. They cooked. No joke. Those guys on stage, I ain't kidding you. They were cooking. And so they get done with their performance. We get up to the front of the house. And I'm looking back, and I think they had, like, Hot To Go or something playing. And, I mean, they had the whole crowd hyped up with this song. That's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of vibe I'm talking about. It was just a different vibe and different experience. And again, 18-year-old, 20-year-old, hell, 25-year-old me would have thought this was the coolest thing. I gave him an extra bonus point for that. I uh, gave an extra bonus point. House room design and decor was top level. This was some of the coolest design I've seen. I know they're not I know they don't necessarily have tons and tons and tons of money. It's kind of some of the information we were just kind of told by some people that work there. But everything they do, you know, it's produced by the people that work there. They do the scenes. They build the scenes. And it was good. Like, it was great. <laughs> we really enjoyed our walkthrough. We enjoyed everything in the rooms. Uh, very well put together. And some of the scares in those rooms were enhanced by those scenes. Give an additional point for that. Um... I gave an additional point. Some scarers waited until the perfect moment to move and scare. Uh, this shows a deep understanding of good scare tactics. I even gave out a scare it badge, scariest actor badge, 
to an actor that I thought was a legitimate prop. And Please reach most, out to us on Instagram or yeah, YouTube. Feel free to comment on the video if you're the actor I gave the scarab badge to. Uh, you'll know who you are because I was like, you know what? Here, take this. You deserve it. Great scare. I mean, that was phenomenal. It was outstanding. It was such good work. And I wanted to make sure that they knew that it was, I mean, it was basically scare of the night. It was basically scare of the night. And we've been to, you know, we went to a haunted house the night before. And we had another haunted house after that. It was very solid. The vibe here is solid. This place was packed. No joke to the rafters at 6.05. We waited an hour and 45 minutes to get into the house. You guys have built something really special. With minimal work, this can be a mind-blowing event. I gave an additional point just for... I mean, you guys far exceeded my expectations when I walked up there. <laughs> now, aside from my bonus points for a second, I do want to say... I did see the post where the girl took a picture of the, you knew I was going to talk about this, of the ladder with the skeletons on it and said, these are customer waiting. These are customers still waiting from last year. That is, I know the people at the Haunted Sawmill probably didn't like that post. That is one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I can see where if you arrive there at like nine o'clock at night, you are not getting out of there until midnight or later. Maybe 1 a.m. even. Plus one, for the $20, this event felt like maybe the best value in haunting. It reminds me of Dominion of Terror in length and build quality, except with even more entertainment value with the faux band performance. That was cool. Plus one. The warm gift shop and after house area is awesome. It's a great way to decompress. It's a smart business decision. Great way to sell your merch and promote the brand. Plus one, actors stalled us and we didn't even know they were doing it. This was super impressive. Yeah, that was, uh, I gave seven extra bonus points. That was... Eighty-one out of a hundred so far. But what I wanted to say was the group of actresses that stalled us. We had to give some passwords and stuff. That was really cool. They wouldn't let us pass. We had to go one by one. We didn't realize they were stalling us until about twelve minutes later when we finally caught the group ahead of us. That is scare acting and house management on a micro level and that is a different level of haunt acting very very important very very impressive and it's great to see that there are actors and actresses in that house that can challenge the flow of customers especially when they're getting into a bottleneck now again i'm not hitting the haunt with a full points off for catching another group because the group in front of us was just really really slow they did everything they could and i wanted to make sure that they were rewarded for those efforts because that was very impressive well well done so far you're sitting at 81 out of 100 gauge bonus points let's do it for those that are new when it comes to bonus points he and i do not talk to one another about what our bonus points are so no. i'm more than likely going to say something he already said so just a heads up my bonus points goes to, with one point, <clears throat> to the waiting line entertainment. I okay. told you as we were waiting in that line, Justin, I said, I said, this is going to get a point for sure. There's no way that it's not. I love how all, at least perceivably all of the actors and actresses singing on that stage appear to have different personalities of a sort. Mm -hmm. You can tell they even have their own characters and they're almost staple characters because if you take a look along the wall of the stage, you can kind of see images or like little hand paintings of the different actors and actresses singing on the stage. I like that. It kind of, you know, leads some credence that these are 
some mainstay characters and that you can expect to see them. This is who you board. should expect to see at the haunt. Exactly. And it is always really disappointing when you see a picture of an actor or actress that you think is going to be in the haunt and isn't in the haunt. Thing is, these guys were in the haunt, so they lived up. <clears throat> bonus point for that. So that's one point, by the way. I know I said bonus point twice. Moving on, I want to say the end of the haunt dining area was something different. It's cute how I came out of that haunt and I'm like, all right, so I'm just going to see some dingy door that says exit now. <laughs> and some some guy is going to come up with a chainsaw or whatever and uh, try to scare me. I'm like, okay, all right, haven't seen this before. No, I walk out and I saw like the sweetest little diner area where you can, with, with by the way, multiple counters where you can get like a little information booth with merch. You can also go on the other side where you're going to see concession stands. And you think, okay, well, what if I want to eat something and then watch? Why can't I watch the band? Oh, don't worry. You don't need to watch the band because you can watch the entire house on a TV on the wall. You can see security cameras of people getting scared. And I that think there is was a photo so. Up too. There was a there was a photo yeah, op. Yeah, there was. I want to also note, and I I told you this three times. I didn't know if you listened to me, but I was kind of gushing over it. But there is a statue in there of Scooby Doo, uh, not of Scooby Doo, but one of the monsters with the green outfit and like the logo. It just it gave me so many nostalgic flashbacks of watching Scooby Doo as a kid. I loved it. So, yeah, I had to give a bonus point for that end of the hot dining area. My next bonus point was marketing unique characters because as we were walking up to the haunt, the prelude of that ticket booth, you can see the cool little posters of all the different characters, unique characters, and not only... Are you going to correct something? Did I say a bad word? Did you just say prelude? Is it once I use it right? Prelude, prelude, yeah. Like, that means, like, what comes before. Yeah, I was really... Nice job. Yes, go! No, I'm using it. Okay. Anyways, um, walking up, you can see these cool little posters, each of which are marketing separate achievements from different, like, Haunted Wisconsin posts or, um, you know, just little information tidbits about, hey, we're a nonprofit, such and such. And not only that, little character profiles. It doesn't stop there because as we were waiting... <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. I thought some guy in a costume like that does nothing to do with the haunt came up, started giving us business cards. And I'm like, what is this? And then I read it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. This is actually a ni nice little unique way handing out little trading cards to people who are waiting. Be like, hey, you know, expect this person around the uh, location, along the premise. And it premise. Did I say that right? OK, I'm trying to use big words, people. And it's just a great way to kind of get you introduced to the unique characters that is at the Haunted Sawmill. My next line, my next point. For some reason, I had to think about why I wrote surprisingly long. I'm like, did I give a bonus point for like the wait time? Did I, why did I do that? But I realized when I wrote surprisingly long. No, I wrote this a couple hours or later earlier. I noted how surprisingly... I thought you were talking about yourself. Is this... I'm going to move on because I have... A... Yeah. Um, surprisingly long, as in the length of the haunt. I was really astonished with how, you know, how long... I'm going to keep using the same word because I'm trying to think of another fancy word. That the haunt was. Because I'm over here thinking, looking on the outside, all right... You can usually get a good visual idea on how long you're going to be at this um, uh, this establishment. We're going to give it about like ten minutes. Twelve I'm going to go 15, up some stairs. Maybe if they're lucky. Yeah. yeah. Look, look through some. Look through some things. No. Like, no, I was wrong. It was like twenty. It was twenty, almost over twenty. It's like walking through one of the burial chamber houses. It, yeah, it, 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 yeah. So it caught me off guard. I was thinking, okay, so this must be the end. Nope. This must be the end. Nope. So, had to give a bonus point for that. My next bonus point <clears throat> really has to be the whole organization of it. Um, I, I loved just that it was a, it was simple cut. It was clean and cut. 
you know, you go, you get your tickets, you get in line, you walk through the little pallet maze, you get the experience there, you get to go through the house, got experience there, and you get done with it. You got the dining area as well as the cameras to watch people. It's, it's nonstop experiences. That's the thing. It's nonstop experiences. You're not sitting there yawning. Now, no, I was yawning, but it's been a long driving night. It was a long drive. It was just, it's nonstop entertainment with different actors interacting with you, whether it be on the stage, palette maze, or house. I had to give a bonus point for that. Everything was organized. It was thorough. Shows you where to go. You go here, you go here. Here's bathrooms. Here's even food while you're waiting in line. Had to give that point there. My last one, my last bonus point is for the teddy bear room. I thought that was the cutest thing ever. It's like the revenge room with the uh, with the goat. I'm not gonna. I can't. I keep forgetting the name. This is where you interject with the name. Baphomet. That is such a cool name, by the way. But anyways, uh, just simply typing on the keyboard. It's that little brief reprieve before the the nightmare that is to come. You know, I I enjoy it. I looked at it. I I'm thinking like, okay, where does the actor start and the teddy bear end? Like. I didn't know. I had to visually look at it, but seeing that little puppet thing, it is just the cutest little room ever. It's creepy. It's eerie, but somehow cute and wholesome. Had to give that last point there. So if we're keeping track here, that is six additional bonus points for me. Justin, what does that bring them up to? 87. A An 87? Great. Haunted attraction. I feel like great's almost an understatement for some things, but it is well deserved because they, it was a time to behold. So let's talk about MVAs. Let's talk about most valuable actors. Let's start. Um, I have two. Uh, I'm going to say the band members that did the performance. That takes a lot to do. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how old you are, how much confidence you have, how cool you are. None of that matters. That takes a lot to do. It takes a lot to get up in front of almost a thousand people. And whether it's real or not, doesn't matter. That is a lot of work. That is a lot of stress. And that is a lot of pressure. Huge ups to all of the band members. And the energy was through the roof. I also... Of course, want to name the recipient of the Scarret badge, the actor that was in the that was in the house, actor actress that was in the house. Uh, it was dark; I could barely see you, but the scare I was just not ready for it. It came out of left field. I basically, like was almost like, dude, look at this awesome prop. And the moment I like pointed and reached, this person just came to life, and I was like, holy crap whatever dude like i'm like just take your scarab badge you deserve it i quit i'm like i'm i'm out of, i'm like just tell me to get out lose some points i'm out of here i mean it was it was great it was it, it was uh yeah and there was plenty of other competition for mvas too because there was plenty of other actors that i thought were props quite literally the performance was really good Cage, MVA. My MVA has to be the password girls. Yeah. Because, again, we didn't realize we were catching a group. And boy, did they stall us. It was just a great way to kind of separate those groups. You know, it really takes a lot to stop a group of people, whether they be pretty, you know, um, uh, what's the word, compliant. Or they be, you know, an, an annoying group of teenage boys, you know, testosterone filled and stuff. Or trying 37 to... and 27 and 30 year olds. Totally not us. And the fact that you can stop them and so, hey, wait up. All right. You're being too fast. What's the password? No, I did say the password. Zotmir. They didn't Zotmir. let me go right away. Zotmir. Oh, yeah, you had to say it in an accent. Zo it to me. Zo it to me. Zo it to me. You know, it just, it takes a lot to stop people. It takes a lot because it's got the energy. It saps out of you. I had to give the MVA award to that. Yeah, 
Too there bad. is those two girls. There is a lot of energy and a lot of passion at the haunted sawmill in Merrill. You can absolutely tell that what they say on their website is 100% who they are. This is a community built, community driven project. They love what they do, <clears throat> and their passion is 100% palpable. There's a few things they need to clean up and a few little finite details that they need to touch up about the haunt. But other than that, this was a really great show. 87 out of 100 makes the Haunted Sawmill a great attraction. And as far as I'm concerned, it is a bona fide. You heard it right here on Is It Scary Wisconsin. For all of you, it is a must visit in the 2025 season. Again, there's a lot of imitators popping up right now with haunt reviews being the hot topic of the week. Just remember, when it comes to your Wisconsin haunted house and haunted attraction reviews, if it ain't, is it scary? It ain't shit. Now, if you're an actor or an actress at the Haunted Sawmill and you found anything we said helpful, constructive, or informative in any way, shape, or form, let us know in the comments. Like the video if you enjoyed this no BS review. And we are going to see you all right here next time. But at the end of the day, Gage, there's just one question we need to answer. Is it scary, Wisconsin? Bye.